So here we go with our incredible project, making beaded chokers using our bead soup. Hey, you guys. Hey, so doing my best to be consistent. It is Thanksgiving Eve. I'm so excited. So this is what you're gonna need. I already did a preview or prelude of what today's video was gonna be about. So I wanted to set out just the things you're gonna need rather quickly. So you're gonna need your lobster claw clasp, and I'm just using these little, um, well, obviously lobster claw clasp, right? You're gonna need that. You're gonna need some things that can dangle from the center of your necklace. And I have some of these. These are things that I kind of already had on hand. So there's a little Eiffel Tower. There's a little car. They kind of look like the Monopoly board pieces. Super cute. Um, I also have like these little silver pieces that could hang. You just put them on a jump ring. I have some crosses as well. So I haven't decided which ones I'm gonna use just yet, but you wanna have those available. You also are gonna need some split rings, split jump rings. And if you want your dangles to hang down a little lower, you're gonna need some eye pins. And last but not least, you're gonna need some crimp beads. Now I have this little bag of hodgepodge off to the side. I would not dare let you look inside. It is just so much going on in there. But you're gonna need crimp beads. They're super small. And you're gonna wanna make sure that the crimp beads you use, that it's large enough for your um, beading string, whatever kind you're using, that it's large enough for that string to go through. So I'll do my best to show you that when we get to that stage. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick a length of string. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be my choker. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring it around my neck. You can't see me in the screen. I'm just putting it over here. And you can make yours as long or as short as you want, but I always recommend cutting off a little bit more than what you need to allow for mistakes when you go to crimp your beads. So there we have our string. We're gonna set all of our utensils out to the side. Now the other thing that you can do is you can tape the end of your beading wire to the table or to your paper. Um, you can also use these clamps. I got these clamps from um, Dollar Tree and it says they're heavy duty. I've never tried to use them. I may try to use those today. But the reason why you wanna clamp things down is because as you begin to string your items, you don't want stuff falling off the end. So what we're gonna do to prevent that, let's see if I can get you closer, is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our crimp bead on the end. Now this thing is super tiny, so it's hard to see. And all I'm gonna do is put it on the end of the fishing wire, okay? So I'm not sure if you can notice or not, but there's a little bit of room still in there that I'll be able to come back through with um, restringing the bead, the bead back through it. So let's go ahead and put on our jump ring. And I think I want a smaller jump ring, so I'm gonna go in my little Zhuzhad bag. I was telling you I'm not gonna show you on camera. And I'm going to go ahead and put the jump ring on the end. Now the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna attach this to the end along with the lobster claw class. So that way as I'm stringing, nothing is falling off the end this way. So we have a crimp bead, we have a jump ring. Now what we wanna do is I wanna turn it around just so you can see it better. Now it's in our reverse hand. I'm gonna take the clear wire over the jump ring it would be better not to use split rings for this, but this one just happens to be a split ring because that's what I have on hand. And you wanna take it and you wanna push the string back through your crimp bead. I'm gonna try to get it close and focus the camera. It's not necessarily focusing like I want it. That's how it should look right now. Okay? I have ink on my hand. <laughs> So I was writing out what to say of the Lord. So what you could do is pull a little bit in just so you have a little bit of give there. And what we want to do is we want to get that crimp bead as close to the end loop as possible. Where you do have a little bit of a loop there because you don't want it so tight that there's no give on the necklace. I don't like really tight um, necklaces like that. Now I need to get, I don't have my flat nose pliers because they're inside the cut that you're on. So what I'm gonna do is you would use your flat nose pliers 
to flatten this out, I'm gonna use my round nose pliers. And I'll show you what it looks like. Now let's say you get this on here and something happens and it breaks. You can get it off, but it's very challenging. Okay, so because I didn't use the flat nose pliers, it didn't get perfectly flat, but good enough. Okay. So that's our string for our choker and we can get started and that way when you start putting stuff on the end, it's not gonna go trailing off. Okay, so now all we have to decide is the centerpiece for our bead and which beads we're gonna use. So I'm gonna move those out the way and we're gonna make our bead selection and I'll be right. So I did promise you I would show you some of my beads and I just wanted to show you I have beads that I'm thinking about using I haven't decided yet. Those, because I think I wanna wear whichever one I create. So these are just some pearl beads that I have on hand. I'm not always a fan of pearls, but I just wanted to show you all of these varying colors that are really, really pretty. My mom organized all these by colors. So those are some I was thinking about using. And then you already saw the bead suit that we have laid out as well. But I just wanted to show you some that I had out. These are beads that I had gotten from Michaels a while back. And I just grabbed a whole on set of them just so you could see them. I thought those were really pretty. And look at these. I got these when I went to a bead show um, years ago, but they are so incredible. They are just screaming to have something made with them. Um, here's a green set. We may use those today, I'm not sure. I like the blue ones, but I just think they're kind of summery. But look at these. So I also had gotten those from a bead show a while back. Now, wouldn't these make a beautiful center bead? This whole string was actually $12 for these. Look like obsidian, I'm sure they're not. I don't know what they're called. But I just think they're so, so pretty. Look at these little flowers. They're just cute, sweet little flower beads. And one more I'm gonna show you and then we're gonna get started. I just wanted to show you just like some of the beautiful beads I have on hand. Aren't those gorgeous? They look like this beautiful, rich, yummy, turquoise brown. So I was just sharing with you that I have so much to choose from and there's still buckets and bowls of tons of these outside. But I just wanted to share my secret stash with you. And let's see, we have one more bag of beet soup that I really do like as well. And I'm just trying to decide on what we're gonna go with. I kinda want something cream colored with like a brown, um, with like a brown center stone. But I'm not sure yet. So let's think about what we're gonna put together. We have tons of beet soup to use. That's what all this is. I just decided to drag it out so we could look at it together. And now we're gonna get started with our beading because I have a real estate client today. So hey, you guys. Okay, so I decided to go with a tray of kind of like, these are like an ivory bead. So they have like a matte finish and they're like these round disc beads. And then I found these and these are like blush colored pearls that are really pretty. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that that's what I'm gonna go with and that this is gonna be our silver stone. It's kind of like a burnt red, burnt orange not really orange, more like a burgundy. And I decided that that's what we're gonna go with. I haven't decided if the center stone is possibly gonna be a silver dangle or if it's gonna be this particular bead. But guess what? We can make more than one necklace. Doesn't have to be just one. And y'all, you know, all these beads are calling my name. But nevertheless, let's keep going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out first stringing the disc beads <clears throat> and then probably do like a blush pink pattern or like a, um alternating pattern. I don't always know the pattern I'm gonna use starting out, but what I will do is probably do, I'm gonna see what this looks like on the end since it's gonna be the bead closest to the hook and the clasp. So, and you wanna think comfort when you're making your necklaces as well. So let's do those two blush beads on the end. And I know that some of you probably use a bead board when you're making necklaces. I don't like bead boards, I don't know. Just personally, they're a little weird to me. Not people that use them, just the board itself. And so I just don't like them. I have, I had one in the past and I may have one out there in the garage, but I don't use the bead board. Although it does have measurements on it. I don't know, it's just too confining and not artsy like to me. <laughs> I don't know why I think that, but I think I tried to make necklaces with it once. Not to mention to me when you're making necklaces using the bead board, they just seem to kind of be straight lace and I don't know. 
I'm rambling. So anyway, I'm so excited. I could barely sleep. I woke up excited to create this video because I said everything out last night when I did the video that said, you know, today I'm gonna be doing um, this necklace. I was just so excited to share it with you. I could barely sleep. So let's keep stringing. I love these disc beads. I literally, when I did hair um, in Virginia, I used to own salons. People would bring me beads. These look like candy. These remind me of like that, um, the Smarties candy. <laughs> And I did see on YouTube where somebody was making jewelry out of candy. I was like, well, that's different. So let's go ahead now and do a larger bead. So this is what it's looking like so far. I think it's really pretty. I mean, and necklaces come together, you guys, so quickly. So you really wanna be thinking about as you're putting them on here, of course, you're gonna do a count. I haven't done a count yet to see where we are, but you wanna do a count. Make sure you have even number of beads on both sides so it's not all wonky when you get to the end. And I have had to remake things before, like take them apart. Not after I put them together, but I had to take them apart after stringing everything on because they didn't match up. Or what you could do is take apart the end and then just work backwards. But we don't want to have to do that. You guys, it is Thanksgiving Eve. I'm so excited. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I love to eat. I love to cook. Food is my love language. So I'm like all about that life. Now, I had a client yesterday. They came down from Virginia to start picking out their stuff for their home. She told me she had already started cooking. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm like, must be a half fan because I'm not cooking until some stuff today. So let's do a count right here. Two, <clears throat> excuse me, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So let's go ahead and put another blush bead on. And look how pretty this is looking. So mind you, um, what you want to do too is hold it up to your neck and just see how far around it's coming and how much more room, you know, you need to be adding stuff. So I need to add, I'm just pushing that string back through there. It's where you hide the other piece of string. You can always do that at the end too. I'm just messing with it. So we want to make sure we have enough disc. I think I do have more of those. So we could change it up a little bit here too if we wanted to because I have some round ivory beads that match this one. Let's see if we want to add one of those. Because this is your design and you get to decide, but I'm also thinking I want to wear this today. The only thing I don't like about that is it seems kind of big and obtrusive in the middle of the necklace. So I'm going to put these up. We're not going to use those in this particular design. We're just going to use the flat disc. So what we're going to do is we're going to count out about six of these, I think, and then let's see where it falls. So you could do dangles all the way around. You could take apart old jewelry and make new chokers and just um, refurbish old jewelry that way as well. Um, I, let's see how many we have here. Two, four, six, eight. One an even number because we have 12 over there, or at least I do. So we'll put that here. I don't know that we're going to have enough round beads. <clears throat> oh, we do. So let's put a round bead on here. And then let's see about putting our center bead on. Look how pretty that is. I love the blush color. I love the way it looks against the, um, the ivory. And I love how that beautiful center bead gives it a little bit of gloss. So I'm gonna go hold it up to my neck and see if this is too close for us to close it up when I get to the other side, stay tuned. So I needed to add a few more beads in there before I put that one on. And then we'll check one more time. So I'm just gonna make like a little design in here. And then put the center stone on because I want it to really stand out against the white or either the the pink. I don't like that number count right there, so I'm going to take that one out. I don't like it up against that flat cream color. I'm thinking that I like the burgundy up against the white, so let's see. That's why I'm taking it off so I can see. Yeah, I think that looks better because that kind of makes it stand out. Let me go check. Okay, you guys, so I'm finishing on around. I decided to add two center beads. And what I was gonna share with you is like, let's say you get to the end and your necklace is too short, you could always add an extender. In other words, you can add a piece of chain, you can add an extra jump ring, you can add an extra loop. So don't worry about if you get to the end and you're like, oh my goodness my necklace is too short because I'm making this particular necklace for me or if I put it in an Etsy shop, I'm gonna make sure I tell what the measurements are for someone that's gonna wear it so they'll know what size it is. Oops. 
So you can add chain to the end so the person wearing it can extend it if you're selling these. Keep that in mind, okay? Let's see, we have two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten. So we need two more to flat this week. Ooh, you guys, I hope we don't run out of this week. I hadn't used these forever since Jesus was a baby. Now on the day we decide to use them, there might not be enough. I'm like, uh, help us, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so let's see, let's hope we have enough. I see some more over here as I'm making, cause there was a whole necklace of these. Not a whole necklace, but a whole string of these. So there should be plenty. Let's see. And look how fast this necklace gets whipped up. I'm talking and stopping. So really we could have just continued forward with a straight necklace by now, but imagine that you can make these as gifts to give to your friends. Like if you're having Friendsgiving, if you're having like a um, small intimate Christmas gathering with your friends or your family, or you could surprise someone with a gift. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, two, four, six, eight, nine. So y'all, we gonna need a lot more of these here discs. Let's see what happens. And look, what's my plan if we get to the end and I don't have enough of these? I don't know what my plan is. I'm just gonna believe God that like he multiplied the, multiplied the five loaves and the fish. Um, I might have the number of loaves off, but like he multiplied that, I'm believing he's gonna multiply these disc beads. So let me go count out a few more disc beads and let me hold this up so you can see what it's looking like. Look how pretty that is. necklace like so that's what it's gonna look like I think it's really pretty really simple and can be worn with anything you can dress this up you can dress this down so let me go find enough of the flat beads so we can finish it up we need let me put my, put my pink bead on here and we need 12 more of the flat beads bracing won't he do it I ended up finding 14 <laughs> And we only need 12. Oh, thank God. Okay, so let's get this puppy finished up. Y'all, as I was digging in my little bead suit, how beads rolling all over the place. The reason I'm talking about is because my children are still asleep. So anyway, what are your Thanksgiving specialties that you're going to be making? Put them in the um, comment section. I can't wait to show y'all what I found at Hobby Lobby the other day. I was like, hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. I know, can't see. So we're finishing this one up, and now while we're doing this one, I have an idea for another one, and we're gonna be using these gorgeous hematite beads, which I'm really not a fan of hematite, but they're in the bag over there, and I feel like they're calling my name, so we're gonna use them. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, one last one, and then we're gonna put on the last two round beads. And we need a smaller pink ones on the ends. Make sure they match. So look how pretty that is. So I'm gonna go ahead now, we're gonna finish this up, but let me make sure it fits before I put the lobster claw glass on. It's a little on the tight side, but remember I can't really go add anything over here. So I'm gonna have to add a loop on the ends. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So let's put our print bead on. So the print bead is on there. Now we're gonna put on another jump ring. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm coming. I'm digging in my little jump ring bag. And they're not wanting to cooperate. Okay, so here's a jump ring. So remember I said we're gonna take the jump ring and you're gonna have your crimp bead. So now you're gonna bring it all the way down. You're gonna take the clear string over. See, it's the only strung on there once. You're gonna take it over that and pull it back through. I'm sorry, let me do it better. 
you're gonna take the string over, put it through your crimping mark, crimping bead, and then remember you're gonna have a tail. And what you wanna do is go ahead and string the tail through your beads. I take it through about four beads. You can take it through as many as you want, but the whole purpose is to give strength to your necklace. So, you're gonna pull it where it's pulling closer. See that moving? And you wanna keep pulling it closer till you get it close to the jump line. Remember I left, you wanna leave a little give right here because you want your necklace to have movement, right? You don't want your necklace to be all tight. See how that has a nice wobble to it? You want your necklace to have a nice movement to it. So this is gonna be shorter than, than what I wanted only because I measured to, um, it's not that I didn't use enough string, I didn't put on enough beads. So we're gonna stop though with what we have because I like it and I already know that I can extend it. So now the reason why you wanna use a pair of flat nose pliers to cover this up is because you can break your string. So look, we have it completed. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the clasp on the end. So what we'll do is we strung this through four beads so we can go ahead and snip this. Get my scissors. Don't y'all fall out the cup. Okay. So now I'm using my scissors to snip that. Make sure you don't snip the wrong string. That would be devastating. And then what you want to do is just get a little bit closer to snip that piece of that piece of string. You don't want to cooperate. But I want to cut that off, so let's get it. You could use a pair of um, fingernail clippers as well. So I got that cut off, so now push that last little tail through your necklace. And now let's go ahead and put on our lobster claw clasp. So here we have the end to our jump ring, and we just pulled it towards us. Remember, we don't pull it straight apart, we pull it towards us. And there we go, we're just gonna put the lobster claw clasp on there and we're gonna close it up. Now remember I told you if we wanted to extend it, you could add some chain to this end or you could add another jump ring to this end. So if you wanted to, just for extender's sake, you can include a piece of chain with foot when you're selling this just so they could extend it out a little bit. And you can also add another jump ring here for the lobster claw clasp to attach to. So then they have two jump rings plus the lobster claw clasp. So because I'm right-handed, I would put it on this way. So we open up our little lobster claw. And there we have our first choker. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. I think that's so pretty. Let me try it on right quick. Okay, you guys, so I'm certainly not the cutest model for this. I would, would have used my 14 year old, but she's sleep. But look how cute that is. I think that came out so adorable. And so I actually have it on the second jump ring and it is the super cutest tribal type choker. So let's go do another one. Okay, you guys, so you're gonna need another piece of string. And this time I'm gonna use about the same length of cord, but I'll probably use more beads so I'll have more room to um or more give with the necklace so let's get our crimp beads of course I have to dig mine out this bag so forgive me just need two and I have um like all these little trays I really need to get organized I'm hoping that one day when we move I'll get organized. So let's go ahead and put our crimp bead on the end like we did before. Have it on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our jump ring on the end like I showed you how to do. So you have the jump ring, you have the crimp bead. Move the light a little bit. Okay. Jump ring, crimp bead. And 
is sliding. So we're gonna take our clear fishing line or necklace, um, wire, whatever you have, and we're gonna, I'm sorry, fold it over our jump ring and loop it back into the crimp bead. See? And then we're going to pull it that way. And I wanna leave, again, a little bit of give, a loop on the end. I'm gonna leave a little bit more this time. And then we're gonna close it up. Again, you could use your flat nose pliers. I'm just using my round nose pliers. But flat nose will be way easier. Okay, we close it up. That's too much. That's too much gear. Hold on. I don't like that. Sorry, we're gonna start over. I don't like all that give on there. So let's get another front bead. I left too much space. And I could go trying to crack that off of there and open it up and do all that without cutting the string, but I ain't doing all that. Loop back through your crimp bead. So now let's loop back, right? I think that's plenty of give right there. Close that off. This time we're not gonna let it slide all over the place. That was my fault. I put my thumb up to it that time. So there we go. So now we have that in. We're ready to go. Now I decided to use a different bag of bead soup. I love how this has all these hematite beads in here because I really want a smaller design. So I'm gonna pour this bag out. I Meaning I want. Sorry about the noise. I want to work with smaller beads, so get some of these chunky beads out of the way. So because I have all this hematite and this bead soup, all of these shiny little black beads, they're like calling my name. So I want to make something with that to wear today. And then we have to come up with a center stone. So I'm not sure yet what our center stone is going to be. I kind of like that idea. But I don't know. Let's start beading and see where it leads us. Okay, so let's get going. So now we are gonna do this super cute one with the hematite. And this one, I kind of, my beads took off. I kind of like the idea of the hematite with these really soft petal pink ones. I don't know, I like that. I thought thinking about the Eiffel Tower, but the Eiffel Tower is kind of skinny. But the car is a cute idea. I don't know. So anyway, let's keep going. We're just gonna start stringing our hematite beads from over here off of this tray. And listen, all of these are all different sizes. So in other words, I'm not trying to line them up. I'm not trying to match them up because these are all wonkylicious. They have holes in random areas. Kind of like they just said, hey, you take what we give you. <laughs> so with these, I'm not gonna necessarily do a count. I'm gonna eyeball it. Um, because we're just making a really random design. But I was thinking that when I started putting these together and I saw them next to the pink, I was like, how pretty is that? I just saw a stone that was kind of calling out my name that could potentially be a center stone. What do you think? These some slippery little dopers. I'm not sure yet, so we'll sit that off to the side and see if it continues to call my name. But, um, Hematite, you know, people say all these stones have healing properties. I'm not that girl. I'm a Christian. I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has healing properties. But, you know, everybody is entitled to think what they think. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just like the Lord is a healer, right? So let's keep going. But see how easy it is to make necklaces? Now, what we do want to do is go over here to the end like we talked about. Now, these are some small little holes, so you may have to force your wire through the end because you wanna make sure that you can double back. Now, you can use some type of beading awl. I may have to drill that to get the, because um, notice that the wire doesn't wanna go back through it, but you wanna have where your wire goes back through those stones. So I may have to use the drill on that one and try not to drill the necklace at the same time 
but because you want your beads to be able to circle back through that hole, just strengthen the necklace. And sometimes when they're making beads, they make the holes really small so even your string doesn't go through. So be sure before you start making your projects that the string will fit through your beads. Like you'll find that sometimes with like really small glass beads, they can be so frustrating sometimes. So I'm gonna try to fit this through here right quick before we move on because I wanna pull this necklace down. I may have to take this one off if it doesn't wanna cooperate. I have a pointy tool. I'm gonna see if I can push through the end of that bead and see if I can get it to move anymore. Let me see if I can get it to go through now. Okay, so I had to <clears throat> undo that crimp bead without cutting the string. I'll show you one day how to do that. I added two more beads to the end so that way it would have, um, we'd be able to hide that string in there, make sure we could give security to our necklace because that matters, right? So what I did was, I do probably need to count these beads. Um, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I'll just know when I go to add the really pretty pink beads. I think I wanna do smaller, let's see. I, what I love about this is we just get to do whatever we wanna do, right? Just gotta make sure we have even numbers. I like the daintiness of that or the petiteness of that. Look how pretty that is. So, love it. You could wear this with a really pretty V-neck um, sweater. You could wear this with a white top. You could wear this with a T-shirt. I need a really cute white T-shirt. That's something I don't have. I was thinking about going to Walmart today. I was thinking about getting our putting up our Christmas tree too, but y'all, we are always late about doing that. How soon do y'all put up your Christmas tree? It's terrible how late we are sometimes. Last year, y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I'm ashamed to say it. I think we put up the Christmas tree a few days before Christmas. <laughs> I'm just not into a bunch of Christmas decorations. I, don't, I never have been, but I really want to be for my 14 year old. She loves Christmas. She loves the holidays. I really do want to create those memories. So I want to do better about decorating this year so everybody's in the Christmas spirit, especially since we're not going anywhere. We normally don't travel during the holidays anyway. One year we went to New York. I think it was about two years ago. Y'all, it was cold as all get out, but we did D.C. Then we went to New York. We came back and stayed in D.C. and we were home by Christmas Eve. And it was so fun. We had such a beautiful time. And I loved how cold it was, even though it was freezing, because in the South, we think it's cold when it's 60 degrees. Like today I'm freezing, it's probably 62 outside coming up. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And 16, okay, so. Let's put four more, and then we'll put another pink bead. And then we'll see how close we are to our center stone. Y'all, you can get so many great bead sales going on right now, too. So if you want to stock up on your bead selection, I need another bead. I always say it like I need a hole in the head. I don't need another bead. But in case you're just like, oh, I really want to have a great collection, hit up Michael's and they have the 50% and 60% off coupons. And when they have, somebody said they have a 70% off bead sale that comes up. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So let's put on another little pink bead. And now we should be nearing the point where we're at the halfway mark of our necklace. I think this is super sweet. I love the shine. I love the, um, the soft muted pink details along with the black. Let me hold it up to my neck and see. Yeah, we're almost to the center. So we wanna start thinking about like a little center design. I'm gonna add a few more hematite. I won't make you stay here with me to watch me do that. It's like watching paint dry. I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, so we're nearing the end. I wanted to show you the center stone that I picked that I decided to go with. I thought that was a really pretty contrast. I don't know, kind of like a nebula <laughs> or a sea urchin, I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm gonna take all these beads we don't need off the table, off the plate. So now all we need is our one last pink blush bead and the last little grouping of hematite. And we'll be finished with this necklace. So I'm gonna go put these last 16 beads on. I did wanna put something that dangled in the center, but um, 
I figured I'd just save those for a seed bead necklace we're gonna do next in our next project because now I'm just like in necklace mania. So let me go get this one finished up so I don't bore you to life and be right back. Okay, you guys, so we have all of our beads on here and let's see if it's choker potential. Oh, you guys, it is chokered up. So now we're gonna put our print bead on. We're gonna put our, we're not adding an extra um, jump ring to this one only because it's the perfect size. But now let's hope that this bead cooperates and fits through, yes. And this one fits through, yes and yes. Let's see if we can push the envelope and get one more. Cause remember you wanna strengthen your necklace and that does that by running the beads back through. So let's watch this. So you can just pull it all up like a little highway, like a traffic, and then, but you wanna have some give on the end. You don't want a tight necklace. So we're just gonna loosen the string up a little bit. Cause I had, remember I haven't closed the cramp bead yet. So we're just gonna pull the string a smidgey. Okay. And then by doing that, and now we're gonna go ahead and tighten the loop on this end. I'm sorry, tighten our crimp bead. And guess what? We are done. Oh, guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to, so let's cut this off. And then we gotta put the um, lobster claw clasp on. That little piece off. Let's grab us a lobster claw. Some lobster would be good right about now. I don't know that I've had lobster in years. I think I've only in this lifetime had it maybe twice. But crabbly, we go way back. Okay. So let's open up our jump ring, pull it towards us, pop our little lobster claw on the end, close her up, and she is done done. See how she has a nice fall. She's soft and not all tight. So I'm gonna try her on. Okay, you guys, so look how pretty it turned out. I'm trying to get in good lighting so you can see it. That is so super cute. So now we have two chokers. Let me go get them. Now look, we obviously can't wear them together. I'm just showing you how cute both of them look. I love how they turned out. You guys go make yourself something super cute. See. For the holiday to wear for Thanksgiving, I love chokers. I also love longer necklaces as well. But today I was just in the mood to make a choker. Now I gotta go hunt down another turkey so my honey bunny, Marvin Price Jr., Pastor Marvin, can go fry him up a turkey for Thanksgiving tomorrow. <laughs> so you guys, I'll be back later with another project. I'm not sure what we're gonna make next, but I'll be back. Love ya.